So Nikki Haley had a really good poll that just came out for her in New Hampshire. Um, it's kind of crazy to say it's a really good poll, but it is. She's 15 points down now to Trump. Now, remember, there was a time where Trump was leading by 40 points, 50 points. Nationally, he still has a colossal lead. But New Hampshire as a state is a little different. They're a little like uh, independent minded and they do their own thing over in New Hampshire. So she had a massive surge. She's now beating DeSantis by double digits in New Hampshire. She's nipping at Trump's heels. Now, we talked about that poll the other day. I basically was curious what you guys thought. You know, is it real? Like, is this a sign of something real? Because Trump does have all this baggage. I, honestly, I don't think people talk about it enough. Everybody rightly talks about Biden's baggage and his age and all these issues in the polls and et cetera, et cetera. Trump has 91 pieces of baggage. The 91 criminal charges that are looming over his head. Now he has another piece of baggage. Colorado just decided you can't even run for president because you engage in the insurrection. 14th Amendment, Section 3 says you can't run. Sorry, we're kicking you off. Now the Supreme Court's got to weigh in on that. He was found liable of fraud in New York. Like he has to pay a fine of up to $250 million. Like, so he's got a lot, a lot, a lot of baggage. So is this like the beginning of the cracks where you have this late surge? Because if Nikki Haley, let's say she wins New Hampshire, is that going to be like a snowball effect? The other thing is now she has all of the money from all of the big right wing donors. That's a big deal, right? So I'm still inclined at this moment to say his lead is too insurmountable. It's going to be him. But at the same time, stranger things have happened in politics, right? There was a time when Rudy, Gi Rudy Giuliani was viewed as the shoe in in 2008 for the Republicans to win the nomination. He was up by 30 points, 40 points, whatever it was. And then he crumbled and came in like near last. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm very interested to see what happens. But having said that, Nikki Haley, on the heels of that poll, is trying to capitalize on this and make more of a moment out of it. And so she's doing interviews. She's going all over the place. She released a new ad. We'll get to the ad in a second. But first, she's going to go after Trump. She's on uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network here. Let's see what she has to say. Folks in MAGA, and let's be honest, there are different strains of MAGA. I like to call it light pink, red, and a little bit dark. Um, how do you go ahead and try to convince at least people that are willing to listen to you that they need to ditch Donald Trump because they, they're in on Trump and go with you? Well, first of all, I don't think we need to label members of the Republican Party. I think that's happened for too long. Mm. I think that we are a country of freedom loving Americans that want to see government just continue to do what it's supposed to do. Government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never meant to be all things to all people. So for She's just like, she's just such a standard Republican, right? Like that's all I hear and see here. It's like old school, standard establishment Republican talking points. Oh, government is too big. It's like, well, thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate it. Going back to the basics. But what I will tell you is, I think President Trump was the right president at the right time. I agree with a lot of his policies. I had a good working relationship with him. But rightly or wrongly, chaos follows him. We all know that chaos follows but him, the left and is, we can't the left be a has been part of that. But I mean, we can't be a country in disarray and have a world on fire, mm -hmm. and make it through four years of chaos. We can't. Mm -hmm. I said rightly or wrongly. Oh, so it could be. I mean, all I know is we need stability and we need strength and we need to. So the line of argument is like, let's be real. He's a fucking drama queen, and drama's always following him. And I don't want to deal with that shit. And neither should you. Which, I mean, true, right? But it's also a really weak argument in the sense that she's like, hey, rightly or wrongly, chaos follows him. In other words, hey, not even necessarily his fault. Like the host said, oh, let's blame the left for that, right? So, I don't know, it's weak, but she's also going after him. Let's keep going. We're answering the issues of tomorrow and not looking back to the past. And we can't keep going back to that negativity and baggage of the past. <coughs> We've got too much at stake. And look, I'm doing this because I don't want my kids to live like this anymore. I want them to have a country that they can be proud of. I want to know that they can live a better life. Right now, 81% of Americans don't think their kids are going to have as good of a life as we did. We can't be okay with that. I'm not okay with that. We have a country to save, but we have an opportunity to get this right. And I'm telling you, I'm going to put everything I've got into it to make sure that not only do we win, but when we win, that we lead in a way that makes Americans proud. I mean, it's just, it's very milk toast, standard politician y stuff. There's nothing about it that really sticks out to me. It's a very weak way of going after him. The other way she goes after him is like, can you believe? Look at that national debt. Tut, tut, sir. And it's like the idea that even Republican voters are voting on the national debt is frankly absurd. Like they're not voting on that. Now, having said all that, I, I am curious. Because 
one of the things that happened in 2020, it was a anti-Trump election. It's not like people loved Biden. They just hated Trump. And so it was this like, whatever, just bring me back to normal. That's what happened in the country. Is there any hope, any prayer whatsoever of, all right, whatever, just let, bring me back to normal among the Republican primary base? The evidence at this point says no, <laughs> right? But we'll see. We'll see. And again, the other point that I, DeSantis has been hammering more on this than Haley is just electability. Just this idea of like, this motherfucker's lost every election since that one he won in 2016. He's responsible for, for Republicans getting their cheeks blown out. I mean, we're talking about it's supposed to be a red wave in the midterms, and then it wasn't. And all of his handpicked candidates did the worst. So DeSantis has been leaning more to that than Haley, but this is her sort of milquetoast standard, you know, pick me over him type stuff. Now, she also released another ad. I'm going to play this for you now. This one is more targeted at Biden. And I'm curious, I mean, I don't know. Is it a better strategy for her to go after Trump or go after Biden? At this moment, I don't know, but I'm curious what you all think. But here, let's listen to her new ad. Like Nikki Haley, they are trying to not focus on Trump really at all, instead celebrating a surge in New Hampshire right now. Now, a clear second place, Nikki Haley, is behind Trump in the first in the nation primary state. And on the heels of those new numbers, she's also launching a new ad, not hitting at her Republican rivals, but right at President Biden. I'll just say it. Biden's too old, and Congress is the most exclusive nursing home in America. Washington keeps failing because politicians from yesterday can't lead us into tomorrow. We need term limits, mental competency tests, and a real plan to defeat China and restore our economy. Defeat China and restore our economy. Like, her first issue is, gotta defeat China. All right, look, that ad kind of annoys me for this very simple reason. She's going after how old people in Congress are and how old the president is, which is true. I mean, that's fair, but she represents all of those same old ideas. She's a neocon war hawk and she's a believer in trickle down economics. So it's like, you can't be like, vote for me. I'm young when your ideas are the same as the old people's. So, I mean, that really, really gets under my skin. But again, I'm going to be interested to see is there any sense of like, just give me more of a normal politician on the Republican side? The evidence to right now is absolutely not. The evidence to right now is no. But New Hampshire, at the very least, is showing a little bit of a spark of that. Because I never thought Haley would be as high as she is in New Hampshire. I mean, 29% right now is nothing to scoff at in New Hampshire. That's nothing to scoff at at all. And DeSantis is down there like 10 or 12% or something like that. So she really blew right by DeSantis. And so, I don't know, stranger things have happened. Are we going to see like a 50-state sweep from Trump? Um, or are we going to see some sort of surge? And then the other thing is, we talked about this the other day too, but at some point, the donors are going to fully pull the ripcord on Ron DeSantis and Chris Christie and all the others who are making a crack at this. And they're going to be like, no, uh, you're getting out and you're endorsing Haley because this is our only hope of taking down Trump. And... Um, I, you know, I should have went back and looked at the polls in 2015 and 2016 before the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary to see how close it was, how far back uh, the different people were. Because I think, I think that those Republicans were actually even a little closer than, than Haley and DeSantis are to Trump. And so, I don't know, maybe a foregone conclusion. This might be all for naught anyway. But she's going after him. She's going after him. She's trying to capitalize on this moment. But it's such a standard politician shtick, and I just don't know if it'll work, especially with that Republican base. The Republican base is very much just like, it's all vibes, and Trump gives them the vibes that they love. It's the, he just taps into that frequency. And she doesn't. And she doesn't. And the other thing is, let's imagine for a second Trump gets taken out of the picture because of this Colorado case and the Supreme Court hears it. And just, I know it's hypothetical, but just ride with me on this. Let's say for... Whatever reason, the Supreme Court is like, actually, Colorado is right. Trump can't even run because of the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. He tried to do an insurrection, and you can't hold office after that, blah, blah, blah. Then you get DeSantis versus Haley. Then I'm really curious to see what happens in that scenario. Because, I don't know, my instinct is that it would still, it would be DeSantis in that scenario. Because DeSantis, at least the, there are many Trump voters who don't hate DeSantis. But from what I've seen, a lot of the hardcore Trump people hate Haley. So I don't know. It, it, we're all we're just talking hypothetical matchups here, but um, it's kind of wild that even these stories that we do, where it's like, look, Haley's going after Trump. 
it's like it's just it all just seems so weak right it all seems like this isn't gonna work none of this is gonna work and that's just the trump effect that's just the trump effect the only person who could take down trump is seemingly trump <laughs> and it would be like him committing his own crimes and being called on it that would be it right so we'll see what happens we'll see what happens see if this charge is at all real Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.